Yes, so welcome to the next uh, class. As I uh, mentioned um, before, I'm, uh, I'm surprised at how many people uh, found last week's class um, relaxing, amongst other things, the one where we were moving the head, um, connecting it to the movements of the spine, but I'm delighted that people, people did. Um, so uh, uh, today we're beginning to draw some of the threads of the last three couple of weeks together. So please come to sit towards the front edge of your chair and as you come to the front edge of the chair just take a moment to notice the alignment of the spine. If, you're, if you feel yourself very rounded back just um, you can think of pushing the lower tummy forward and lifting the chest slightly to help you lift up onto the middle part of the sit bones. And then with the hands on the thighs, bring your attention to your right knee and begin to move the knee, tilt the knee a little bit to the inside and a little bit to the outside. So just nice gentle movement, never trying to force anything, but you're just exploring the freedom of movement in the hip, but noticing how the pressure shifts underneath the foot. And then um, bring your attention to your left knee and do a similar movement, just tilting the knee a little bit from side to side, always being alert to any differences between how the movement feels in, on the one side compared to the other. And then once you've done that a few times, come to centre and please bring your right foot slightly forward of the left. And then just lift the toes, the five toes, trying to create space as you lift them and then put them down. So just the toes keeping the ball of the foot down and then put them back down. Again, just lifting the five toes and then putting them down. And now can you lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot, putting the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So toes first, ball of the foot, ball of the foot down, and then the toes. And then please switch feet, so it's your left foot that's slightly forward. And first of all, just lifting the toes, and then put them down. Again, lifting them, trying to create space between the individual toes, and then putting them back down. Lifting them, and then putting them back down and then lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot try to put the ball of the foot down and then the toes so once more toes ball of the foot putting the ball of the foot down and then the toes and then um, change feet again so it's your right foot that's slightly in front of the left and then lift the front of the foot keeping the heel down and then begin to make circles thinking you're making those circles with the big toe, so um, a big generous circle, so finding movement in the ankle, but letting the knee respond, so that you're not holding, holding the knee in place, and therefore also movement in the hip joint. And then just reverse the direction of those circles, once you get used to the circles you can pick up the pace, but still trying to keep them as full as possible. And then pause, and then this time, changing direction again, think it's the little toe side of the foot that's making the movement. Again, you can pick up the pace a little bit once you get used to it, and then just reverse the direction of those circles. Good. And then pause, switch feet, so it's the, um, left foot that's forward, lift the front of the foot keeping the heel down, again give permission to the knee to move and then begin to make some circles with the big toe. Um, and once you've done a few just letting, try, just trying to explore a full range of motion then you can pick up the pace, pace. And then just reverse the direction of those circles and once you've done about four or five in one direction, then think of switching to the little toe side of the foot, 
making these circles. It's very much been a foot term um, in some of the classes. So, and then reverse the direction of those circles, still thinking of the little toe side of the foot leading the movement. And then pause, come back to centre, so the heels underneath the knees, bring your attention to your right foot, begin to lift the big toe side of the foot, and then the little toe side of the foot. So this time we're keeping the knee more or less still in space, so not tilting it from side to side. So it's more a movement in the ankle. And you might find the toes lifting as part of this movement. So just notice that. And then um, see if you can now keep the toes down and quiet. So it's almost as though you've got a grape um, underneath the heel and you're just squashing the grape from one side to the other. Just So you'll hardly notice anything at this distance of me from the screen. But it's, So you're just pressing to one side of the heel and then the other. And as you do that, so I can certainly feel something happening, a little bit of internal rotation, external rotation in the ball and socket of the hip joint. Pause, bring your attention to your left foot and begin to lift the big toe side and then the little toe side of that foot, keeping the knee more or less still in space. And again, you can allow the toes to be part of this if you find that helpful initially to bring in that movement. And then pause, see if you can keep the toes this time fairly quiet and think there's a grape that you're squashing one side to the other, but essentially keeping the foot, the toes down. And um, again, just seeing if you can notice so there's movement in the ankle, a little bit of movement in the lower leg and um, an echo of this in the hip joint. Now pause and then bring your attention to the right leg again. Imagine there is a peg between the big and second toe. Can you lift the heel as high as you can? Do you feel the contraction in the calf muscles? And then take the heel to the outside and put it down, letting the knee tumble to the inside. And then you lift the heel as high as you can and bring it to the inside, letting the knee go to the outside. So each time you lift the heel, try to lift it to the apex as high as you can. So we're working into those calf muscles. Put the heel down, lift it as high as you can and bring it to the inside. So to the outside and to the inside. Once more to the outside and to the inside. And then pause. Now the focus is on the left foot, so the, the imaginary peg is between the big and second toe. So first of all, just lifting the heel as high as you can, and then putting it back down. Again, just lifting as high as you can, and down. And then lift the heel high, put it to the outside and down, letting the knee tumble to the inside. So we're internally rotating in that hip joint. Lift it high and take the heel to the inside, letting the knee go to the outside. So, I love this because of the movement, internal and external rotation it brings into the hip joint. Quite often from sitting, the hips are constantly held in one position, um, and very little movement in the, in the hip joint. So again, just a great way to kind of lubricate into that area. Now pause. Bring the feet and knees together. You can sandwich the hands between the knees. And then just keep the heels together, but take the toes apart. And then bring the toes together, and then take the heels apart. So just try and keep the knees all the time together. You take the toes apart, keeping the heels together. And then the heels apart, keeping the toes together. <laughs> so toes apart, heels apart, toes apart, 
heels apart. So just as we do a few more of these, just bring the attention to where the thigh meets the pelvis, the hip joints. See if you can notice the movement there. Good. And then pause, just release the hands back onto the thighs. And now we do our funny kind of man-spreading exercise or Charlie Chaplin. So you take the toes apart, let the heels go apart, toes apart, heels apart, toes apart. So I'm at my maximum now for sure. Bring the toes together, heels together, toes together, heels together, toes together. So now leading with the heels. Okay, as we just explore this and then the toes, see if you can tune in to what's happening into the hip joints. Got to, oh, yep, yeah, just about one more there. And then bring the toes together, heels together, toes together, heels together, toes together. So just going to repeat that. But this time, see if you can more think of including what's happening in the at the top of the thigh in the movement so that you when you take the toes apart heels apart you're thinking of that rotation happening happening at the top of the leg internally rotating externally rotating internally externally internally don't worry if you don't completely get get that but just bring your attention to there and then once more toes heels externally rotating internally that's it wide now stay as wide as you comfortably can be so it might not be as wide as me might be wide and wider who knows and and then try to really press down into the little toe sides of the feet. So press down into the little toe sides of the feet. You'll feel something probably happening in the hip muscles. And you can think as you press into the little toe sides of the feet of pressing your knees out to the side. And then again, press into the little toe sides, thinking of pressing the knees behind you Good, and then release, come back, come back, come back, and back, bringing the feet to, together, good. And then separate the feet and knees again. Just have the arms comfortably down by your side, and then lift the shoulders up to the ears, roll them forward and down, and then squeeze them together behind you. They come up towards the ears, forward and down, and then squeeze them together behind you. Okay. Up towards the ears, forward and down, squeeze together behind you, and then reverse the direction of these circles. Okay. Just nice, easy rhythm, full, as full circles as you can, just checking that you're not substituting elbows, keeping the shoulders still. So you're just trying to find as much movement, circles through the shoulders, good, and then release. Separate the feet and knees a little bit, and then begin to imagine that grape is underneath the right heel again, and begin to press down into that grape. So squash it down, but this time you can feel what it does, it helps the right side of the pelvis lift. So it begins to initiate this possibility of side bending over onto the left, and then release. So we're just staying with the right leg to begin with. So you push down into the floor, so you feel, oh, that tends to lift the right side of the pelvis. But as you know in this class, that in order for that side bending to happen, you have to think of the ribs, allowing them to move over to the left. And then the tricky thing for many is to allow 
the left shoulder to go to the left and slightly up, and the right shoulder to lower. And then you come back to centre. So it's not this, not this, a little bit of side bending here and then tilting the upper part of the spine. So for many people, they have to kind of bring a bit more attention to the shoulders. So again, I'm not lifting the left shoulder, I'm allowing it to kind of get out of the way to facilitate the side bending. Now pause and please bring your attention to your um, left heel and think the grape is underneath the left heel and squash down, you really press down to br uh, allow the left side of the pelvis to lift to initiate this side bending over onto the right and then come back. So just again, just get, uh, familiarise yourself with pressing into the floor actively to facilitate this side bending, allowing the ribs to move over to the right, but, but just checking, are you really allowing the left shoulder to come down and the right shoulder to be able to be moved up to facilitate this, this curve in the spine. So again, just pressing into the left foot to shift the weight over onto the right. And now, now that we've kind of just practiced that, see if you can go from one side, so you press into the right foot to bring the weight over onto the left come back and then press into the left foot to facilitate the movement over to the right. So just going from side to side, is it, we're kind of just seaweed, <laughs> seaweed, the spine is a piece of seaweed being just waved from side to side, our, our side bending action. Now, um, pause, come back to centre, bring the legs and feet back into parallel, and then bring your, oh, I had a jab yesterday, it feels as though I've been thumped, thumped, bring your right arm um, onto the top of the head, so palm is just on the top of the head, <clears throat> but not squashing us down, this time we're thinking of lengthening up into the palm of the hand. And think of the elbow moving to the right hip joint and then come back to centre. So again, very familiar movement, um, I hope, to this class. So we're not going to the floor, which would be tilting the spine. We're thinking of it coming, closing an arc from the elbow to the hip and, of course, allowing that side bending movement of the spine to happen over to the to bring the weight on to the left and then come back so again you can imagine that grape is still underneath the heel so you're pushing down into the floor as the elbow is coming to the towards the hip but crucially if you if you look at the screen so it's not collapsing to do that, you're still trying to keep the length in the spine. Good. Now pause, just bring that hand back onto the thigh and then bring your left hand onto the top of the head so the elbow is pointing out to the side, not forward, out to the side. Think of pushing into the left foot to squash that grape as the elbow is trying to close the gap towards the hip and then you come back. So it's almost as though you're between a pane of glass in front of you and a pane of glass behind you. So it's not shrinking and it's not collapsing to do this. You're trying to keep long in the, in the spine so that it's really, it is a side bending action. The idea is those ribs on the one side, the left side close together, 
the shoulder and the hip come closer together and therefore the other side opens out. Good. Now, pause for a moment just to rest, rest the hands down. And then please bring your right hand onto the top of the head again and press into the right foot, squash that great, to bring the elbow and the hip together. And then come back to centre and then think of going up and over to the other side. So the elbow, um, right elbow to right hip and then it's when you come to the middle, you continue the arc over and round to the other side. Now, again, try to stay looking forward as you do this and then come back. So just a few to um, elbow to the right hip and it's making a circle up and over to the left. So, um, again, it's a fairly familiar movement to this class, so I'm hoping you'll definitely feel the action of the spine in the centre, so that you can actually begin to think of more initiating the movement of the elbow, elbow from the dis what you're doing with the pelvis and the spine, and the ribs. Good. Pause. Let's let that arm come down. Take a little rest. And then please bring your uh, left hand onto the top of the head. Okay, just trying to be as long as possible and begin to bring the elbow to towards the hip. So you feel, ah, oh, my weight is over onto the right hand side. And then you come to the middle and you think of continuing the circle over to the right. Come back, elbow to the hip, do it again, and then come back up and over to the other side. And just notice if there are certain parts of this when you find yourself the elbow coming forward or uh, looking down at the floor. So you're just trying to imagine you're between those two sheets of glass uh, to, to explore this side bending action. Okay. Now, pause and just take a rest. Uh, this lesson is actually um, what we're leading into is quite a, I think, a, a very nice twist. And, but the side bending is we're just beginning to kind of make sure the spine is getting as mobile as possible um, to, to begin with. So please cross your right leg over the, over the left. And the idea um, uh, here is it, it brings the weight over onto the left sit bone. Um, a little bit. So it brings the weight over onto the left sit bone. And then bring your right hand onto the top of the head. So left hand could be either on the thigh or if you've got a wide chair it can be um, supporting you. And then see if you can bring the elbow again to the hip. Come back and then think of going up and over to the other side. So it'll feel a bit weird because of the cross leg position. So elbow to the hip, you have to go carefully because there's a balance challenge. Come back and then you think of going up and over to the other side. So elbow to the hip, up and over to the other side. Elbow to the hip, go slowly, so when the elbow returns, goes up and over, it's you're transferring the weight going down into that left side, uh, right side I should say, and then come back. Pause, uncross the legs, let the hand come down, 
and then please cross your left leg over the right. Bring your left hand onto the top of the head. So again, right hand can be wherever, wherever gives you support. Um, I've got quite a narrow stool, so there's no, no real hope of putting it on the seat of the chair. And see, can you go slowly to bring the elbow towards the hip? And then think of going up and over to the other side. That's interesting for me. I'm feeling much more wobbly with this cross of the leg. I have a, my history <laughs> is with my uh, right hip joint. So I'm going carefully to explore the ability to side bend in this asymmetrical position. Just do a few, that's it, one or two more, checking your breathing, just nice and relaxed. Good. And then leave that alone, come back to centre, and just notice how the spine feels. Now, bring your hands onto your pelvis. So my fingers are facing forward, the thumbs are to... Um, just behind me and have your feet and knees um, a comfortable distance apart and then you remember we practiced the ability to round the pelvis backwards and the spine backwards so looking to evenly curve the spine looking looking down and then you think of rolling the pelvis forward Lift and, and think of lifting the chest towards the chin, chin, chin. So you're rounding the back, looking down, elbows kind of come forward, and then you um, roll the pelvis forward, lifting the chest. And then can you think of the elbows pinning together behind you and really actively draw your shoulder blades together behind you and and look up look up not necessarily to see the ceiling but look up above the above the horizon le le level so you're rounding the back letting looking down the elbows come forward and then you think of um, rolling the pelvis forward, lifting the chest to the chin, try to squeeze actively the, the shoulder blades together as you look up just beyond the um, horizon. Just a few more and you'll, again you'll remember that what we're trying to do here is preserve the, sh the, the alignment of the outer shoulder over the outer hip, so it's not coming forward, it's not just um, tilting back. By keeping that alignment, lifting the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades together, we're extending the spine, and then we're rounding the spine. Good. Now, just pause for a moment, and bring your hands onto your thighs, just comfortably on your thighs, and see if you can do the same, effectively the same thing. So you're, you're lifting the chest, chest, trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together, looking up slightly, and then looking down. As you lift the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together, can you feel it's almost as if you want to drag the heels back. If you say so you're dragging the feet back on the floor, drag, dragging the feet back on the floor, that helps to switch on certain muscles at the back of the leg to help with that that pattern of extending the spine. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, and then when you round the back, it's almost as though you're sliding the feet forward, they're not moving, but 
as though you're pushing the floor away from you to help round the spine. So again, dragging the feet back towards you as you're lifting the spine, drawing the shoulder blades together, and then pushing the floor away, away from you as you round the back. Just again, just pause for a moment. So I'm turning again to give you a kind of a front view. And now as you, ex as you again extend the spine, think of turning the, the feet and knees out slightly. Like, can you see I'm turning out? but the heels are in contact with the floor, so I'm still dragging the floor back towards me. And then when you round the back, tilt the knees in and turn the feet in uh, as you round the back. So you're opening out, drawing the shoulder blades together to extend the spine, looking up just beyond, Above your horizon and then you turn the feet in, turn the knees in as you round the back looking down. Again, opening to extend, shoulder blades, squeeze them together. It's very hard um, if you, you know, have been sitting at desk and computer not used to that. Certainly for me I have to really think about drawing those shoulder blades together and then you think of the feet turning towards us, the, the knees turning in to round the back. Once more, extend and then release. Good. And then pause and come to centre. The more global pattern of flexion and e extension. Now, um, bring your attention to the knees and then think of your right knee going back and your left knee forward and release. So right knee back, left knee forward. So we're beginning to turn the spine, allowing the, so the pelvis is a steering wheel, we're turning the pelvis through the action of the knees, allowing the chest to turn, the shoulders to turn, and the head to turn to, I'm just looking at the screen to make sure um, everything's happening, good, and then come back. And then the next time you take the right knee back, left knee forward, turn to bring your left hand on the right outer knee, and use the chair or, or the stool. So if you've got a back to the chair, you can take hold with the right hand or have it on the seat of the chair. Come back. And then again, turn. So the left hand is on the right outer knee, other hand is supporting you. And then can you begin to uh, allow your, you press the left hand into the right outer knee to take your left shoulder forward and up and your right shoulder back and down. Release. So you stay turned, but you press the left hand into the right outer knee, push or pull on the other hand so that your left shoulder comes forward and up, your right shoulder back and down and then you release so the shoulders go in the other direction. But if you can see me on the screen, you remember from a, the Twisting Masterclass, I'm allowing my back to um, round, and then as I press and pull, I'm allowing the spine to extend as part of this twist. So just releasing, and lengthening to take the twist. So releasing, uh, I shorten and pressing to extend. Just a few more, releasing, pushing to extend. Good, and then um, just
just do two more. It's such a lovely feeling, I think, to feel that push of the area of the spine between the shoulder blades pushing up through the crown of the head, that lengthening action. Good, and then release. Perhaps feel the echo of that movement in that thoracic area, the area of the spine between the shoulder blades. And now, can you think of your left knee going back and your right knee forward to initiate the twist or the turn towards the left. So you bring the uh, right palm onto the left out knee, the left hand wherever is convenient on the, on the chair or the support. Stay there and then see can you give an extra kind of push of the hand into the knee as you push or pull on the other hand so that your right shoulder comes forward and up, your left goes back and down that you're as tall and as long as you possibly can be. And then you release that press to, as, you sh as you round the spine. So you press, push and pull to extend the spine. So you feel that love, it's like, I always think of a snooker cue, cue. Pushing up, pushing up to lengthen through the spine. Release. And just do a few more of those your own time Good. and release and once more pushing pulling good and then release good. they're beginning to get into the twist now the spine's been uh, um, worked good please cross your right leg over the left again right leg over the left, and bring your right hand behind the head this time, right hand behind the head, and just see if you can turn, turn to your right, They've, um, it will help you if you look at the elbow, turn the head to look at the elbow, and just turn to the right, and come back. So I've got my left hand on the knees just to help. So just turn and release. So it's not doesn't feel as though it's a bigger turn as it was previously, because of course we've fixed the pelvis more in place. So it's more happening and um, the rotation in that area of the spine between the shoulder blades. So you're just trying to stay as tall as possible to do this and release. Come back to center, cross your left leg over the right, bring your left hand behind the back of the head so the elbow is out to the side and then turn the head to look, the head and eyes look towards the elbow and then just see can you take the elbow a little bit further behind you. Now don't force this to the point where you want to clench the jaw or stop the breath. So you're just again, just looking for whatever's possible. So believe it or not, this area of the spine between the shoulder blades is actually one of the most important parts of the, of the spine that contributes to our ability to rotate. But because we often sit in a very rounded position, that ability is compromised. So you just stay as tall as you can, not forcing anything to take this twist. Good. And then come back to centre. Now, um, once more, once more, take your right knee back, your left knee forward and bring your left hand onto the right outer knee. Bring your right hand behind the head and, and look as you get taller towards that right elbow. And then you think of folding the elbow 
to the opposite knee. And then as you take the elbow up and behind you, press down into the left foot, to the opposite foot, so the left foot, squash that grape to take that elbow up and behind you. And then fold the elbow to the opposite knee. So again, taking the spiral, but keep looking at the elbow as you're exploring this. And then we'll keep looking at the elbow, push into the left foot to help you and release. Wow, does that feel great? <laughs> and then uh, take your left knee back and your right knee forward. Bring the right hand onto the left out knee. Bring your left hand behind the head. Now look towards the left elbow and then you think of the elbow coming to the towards the opposite knee. Spiral the elbow up and behind you as you push down into that right heel in particular and then fold the elbow to the opposite knee. So again, spiraling it away, look at the elbow, push into the right foot, elbow to the opposite knee, good, and vice versa, and, and the spiral. Good. Just do one more, just love, I love this feeling, love this feeling of opening out the spine, good, and then release. Let's take a little rest for a moment, just notice how the, the spine feels. And then keep the legs um, about hip width apart and bring your left hand onto your right shoulder, left hand onto the right shoulder. Support the left elbow with the right palm and begin to turn the elbow to the right and then come back. Now, again, I'm trying to keep an eye on the screen, but you allow the head and eyes to turn, turn as you do this. Good. And um, Pause for a moment, just relax the arms, just relax the arms. I just want to show you something. So I turn, turn, and then there's a certain place, certain place of turning when the knees, the knees want to kind of turn as well. And then, and then I come back. See? So, um, one way of doing this is to keep the knees absolutely still, which would be fine. But I'm just trying to find the place where, as I turn more, the knees suddenly want to kind of um, left knee fall in, right knee want to turn out, and then come back. So that's what we're exploring that moment. So bring the uh, left hand onto the right shoulder, support the elbow with the palm. So um, you keep the knees kind of parallel to begin with, and you're just thinking as you're turning the elbow, effectively the chest, where's that moment when the knees just want to tilt in? And then you come back. Again, just see, so just discover where is that moment when the knees want to turn in. Pause and take a, take a rest. Bring the right hand onto the left shoulder. Support the palm with the elbow, with the, the the elbow with the left palm and begin to turn, 
turn, head and eyes can turn, and see if you can discover that moment where, unless you are actually keeping the feet rigid, the knees begin to tilt. Again, you start looking forward, I think, where is that moment? So for me, it's just about now, I can feel the knees wanting to follow. So just a few more. Good. And then come back. Just take a, a rest for a moment. And now, bring your hands. So I'm going to call this the Cossack. <laughs> Maybe that's not completely appropriate right now, but the Cossack. Cossack position, so I've kind of folded the elbows a little bit. So just have a look first of all, just have a look, I'll just show you, show you. So I'm going to take my arms to the right, 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 and feel, ah, where's the moment where the knees fall in? And then I'm going to come back, come back, come back and continue, continue round until the legs are brought back and then round to the other side. And then I let the knees hang out, hang out as I begin to go the other, <coughs> other direction. So what we're doing here, just pause again for a moment, is by letting the legs lag is we're exploring our ability to create a twist that begins at the top and travels down through the spine until there's that moment where the legs have to go to the other side. So I'm not lifting the legs from side to side, I'm letting them kind of um, act as a weight really to develop the twist through the spine. So please bring your hands into this Cossack type position and see if you can begin. So it'll help you to turn the head and eyes. Again I'm trying to look at the screen screen to see where can you turn to before the knees want to fall in. And then you keep the knees where they are and you begin to turn in the other direction. See how far can you go to bring the knees over. And then you go to the other side. Other side. Oh, I'm making a noise on the seat of my chair. And then go to the other side. That's it, you let the knees lag as much as possible to come back, good. And then come back to centre. Um, I haven't tried that on a rotating chair, it'd be an interesting one to try. Good. Now please interlace the hands behind the back of the head. Good. Good. And then Return to flexing, letting the knees come in, the toes turn in, and then extending the spine. So you're extending and rounding, good, and dragging the heels back to help you extend pushing the floor away as the knees and feet turn in and elbows come together. Extending, opening, dragging the heels back and flexing, good. Once more, opening oh, and closing, good. Come back to bring the feet looking forward hands are still behind the head 
and then just turn so you're staying as tall as possible looking to the right elbow come back and then to the left elbow and come back right elbow and then left elbow good and come back bring your hands back onto the thighs just notice how you feel good. and if you survive the class give yourself a, a, a clap so quite a, some uh, interesting movements for the spine anyway hope you enjoyed it i think it's the last class of the block next week for the easter break um, thank you very much, everyone.